hope they're alive. I'm sure if the song is playing, but I am alive, I hope. How's it going? Oh, that's just sad. I hope everyone's doing well today. Getting a lot of <laughs> Cinderella's here, Nathaniel Foga. I will send out the tweet. Hold on. Can we? Oh, it's playing. Excellent. Excellent. The music is playing. I think you can hear me at the same time. I will send out the tweet. And music should be ending. And there it goes. All right. All right. Who do we have? Who do we have? Hold on. Sorry. Who do we have in this? Nathaniel Foga got the first one. Cornbread, thank you for reminding me. Super Duska, here you're at work. I hope things are going well. Ramsey the Artist, Purple Goop, Cornbread, Ace the Wind Rider, uh, whose links are in the description. Gary, how's it going? Dark City Gang, Sinram, Purple Goop. Thank you. It's a beat I made recently, actually. Anyway, we are here live, movie crap live, and I am... I'm here. I'm here. I'm wearing a hoodie because it has been the one I'm going to move the mic. No, let's not move. I'm never a mic in the shot person. I've never been. Anyway, um, it's been a little rainy and cold today. I think it's, you might hear the wind tonight. Hello, Rocket Lomax. Um, <laughs> Ryan Walterson is here. Yes. Um, all right. Yes, we have a show tonight. It is going to not be... Oh, Plup, Classic Cameron. I don't know if I said hi to Austin, but Austin deserves another hi either way. Um, so, basically, what's going on in the movie world is uh, it's slow. Because CinemaCon is next week. I don't know. Hello, Javier Portillo. I don't know all that's going to come out with CinemaCon. I know there's going to be a Joker 2 trailer on the 8th. So, it's slow. So we're going to have a long-ass intro. I have stuff to talk about in that. And then we'll get into the news. And I don't think we'll... I hope we don't end early. I like hanging out with all, all y'all. But, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. This is going to be a looser, looser show. Hello, Will. Hello, Jordan Salafalo. I didn't say it. I hope I said hello to everyone. But anyway, um, where is my little... Believe it or not, I plan stuff out. I don't know if it comes across, but I try. Um, but yeah, it's been creative. Okay, so it was it was an interesting weekend for me for a lot of things. But um, I I wouldn't mind. I don't think Sonic Three because Sonic Three is next year, correct? I don't think it's this year. Is it this year? Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We don't know till next week. Um, but yeah, I had I had an interesting weekend. Um, oh, I do have a I do have the, the, the energy drink with Ramsey the artist did guess. When I get this first super jump, I will show the rest of you. Ramsey the artist. First one, not cornbread to get it. Um, but yes, I had um, oh, it is the year. It's December. Maybe we will then. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm, I'm going to assume we're going to get more news about the fall guy. I think they'll do a screening for all the distributors, I bet you. And I'm sure we'll get stuff about later summer that we haven't gotten. Oh, it's the same day as the Lion King prequel. It sucks to be the Lion King prequel. I can't imagine kids are going to be as into that. Let's fix this camera here. Let's, let's stay on a little. All right. Um... Uh, what was I going to say? Yes, so this weekend was pretty cool um, acknowledgement-wise, I guess. Uh, the film festival thing happened on... Uh, uh, well, uh, right before the show last week, on Thursday. And then um, I put out a short or a reel or whatever the fuck um, for the show I Hate People, People Hate Me. Um, and... Uh, the creator saw it and followed me and commented. And if you want to see that show, you should look at my TikTok comments. But uh, he was really cool. And that made me feel really good because it was like, hey, people seem to like, uh, at least the creator likes my thing. And so it was kind of like nice. I was like, I got in this film festival. I can show off I was in the film festival. Uh, the creator of a show uh, I like, uh, liked my review, felt good about 
those things. So I was like, okay. But then I had kind of an interesting thing creatively where um, I didn't get done what I wanted to get done just because of just being burned out and exhaustion and stuff. And so um, so I wanted to get the Spider-Man and the Simpsons thing over the weekend. But um, I didn't. So, uh, you know, it, it, I did kind of reprioritize a few things and trying to, I don't know, in my, in my head, I would love to put out like two videos a day, but I don't think that's ever possible. Um, just cause of my life and stuff. But, um, I don't know, made me reconfigure some things because for a little bit I was like, I'll watch smiling friends and then I'll make a little thanks to Liz. I'll make a little video and I didn't. Because I was too tired. And I was like, yeah. So I'm really kind of figuring things out. But I think there's been a good amount of content since I've done that. But, um... So loose. Cut it out. Thank you. Um, but I have been, you know... I don't know. I am going to be working on my <laughs> X-Men Season 1 video after I do the... I guess what the reaction of Episode 4 will be later on in the segments. And I will be talking about, uh... Um, Buster is still, Buster is somewhere. Toulouse is acting up. I don't know what, he just wants attention. But anyway, um, hey Zane and Harris and Blood T. Uh, my cat likes my smiling friends. But made me re-figure out, even though I was like on a high of being, <laughs> feeling good about, uh, getting some success in some things. It's like, that's kind of the creative life. I don't know. People maybe aren't as into this, but, um, yeah, but the film festival is cool. I'm excited about that. Uh, if I hear more info, I'll let you know. Um, and I'm trying to work on other film fest things, but I'll get more into that. Um, I did have, this is kind of interesting. I showed, oh, oh, can you do an iconic Vic gym? Can you do your iconic gym victory dance to loose? Please, Jesus, dude. Um, I guess it's like me going, is that it? Someone can make a gif of, I don't, I don't know how to do that. I'm sure if I looked it up and tried. All right, this is the energy drink. It is ghost Swedish fish. I'm sorry for the ghost heavy thing. There's literally, it's just because there's a fridge at my grocery store. And I, I'm like, it's right here. And then I was... I get it on the weekend, so it could be extra cold on show day. And, uh, yeah, I have a feeling maybe Ghost will make another hits next week. I don't know, though. I feel bad because I do like the rock one, but cheers to you, Austin. Um, um, wow, this does taste like Swedish fish. This is not false advertising. I really feel like I just ate... It's tasty, but that is like, whoa, holy crap. Like, that is, that is Swedish fish. <laughs> that, that's what that is. It's like, uh, uh, is the cat replacing me as an annoying random and truthful? It goes, no, no, no. I wouldn't, I wouldn't describe you that way, Izzy. I would say Toulouse has less, Toulouse has nothing to say other than pay attention to me. Izzy actually has funny things to say, whereas... Toulouse is just like, I don't know what's going on with you. You're not chasing a fly. You're not, whatever. Um, Bloxy Axel says, Paul Blart energy drink one. If there is, is there one? If there is one, I would love to know. Cheers to you, Bloxy. Thank you very much. I'm going to put this back here. Next to Izzy. Izzy's right here. Cold energy drink. Um, uh, he's being annoying right now. I don't know why all of a sudden. So anyway, so um, if you're wondering where my Godzilla King Kong review is, it's because uh, when I saw Kung Fu Panda 4 with my daughter, when the Godzilla trailer came on, which she had seen before, um, she had this big reaction. And anytime my daughter has a big reaction to a trailer or a commercial for a movie, because if I did that when, uh, when I was a kid, my parents were like, oh, cool, well, you'll see it in like two years. But I'm like, well, I like movies and I'm going to see this anyway. So I'm going to take her and like have a, a fun time. And so, uh, but she hadn't seen the first, well, she actually seen the original one from the 60s, something like that. She's seen that one. 
But I was like, she doesn't really know what a blockbuster American Godzilla is. And I didn't want to like just throw her into the second one. So we watched the first one. She liked that. I have no clue when we're going to see this one. I hope soon. Um, but it was cool because I got to explain to her Godzilla and how like Godzilla is a different thing. And he's different in uh, America versus Japan. How he changes. How he's a cool... Um, uh, Uh, how he, how he, um, how he changes, like I brought up, like, cause she'd seen the one with the smog monster and like how that was about the environment, how it sometimes represents this to Japan. And although she hasn't seen some of the harder ones, like the original Gojira and stuff, she's seen kind of the funner, silly, like, you know, Mothra, she's seen both the Mothra of the nineties one and the original one, uh, with Godzilla. And so, uh, she was like, actually got to talk about. We got to sort of have a learning moment. You wouldn't think that with Godzilla. I think most people wouldn't. But explaining to her how Godzilla changes over time. He changes in the country. How, why Godzilla wasn't just like fighting in a field. Um, how, you know, it feels sillier. Hey, hey, what's up, Lewis? Um, but anyway, it was cool to watch it with her. She had a fun time. Also, because, um, you know, she met Millie Bobby Brown. So she liked that seeing her in the movie and all that stuff so it was it was like the perfect kind of fun time but we're gonna see it together so if you're like why is it taking so long like my parent i don't know i'm like dealing with other stuff this weekend so i'm hoping we'll get it done soon but my reason is less uh lazy or something it's more i want to see it with her and she likes godzilla with me and i do want to see minus one with her but uh seven-year-olds cannot do subtitles so um uh so if there's a dubbed minus one I will watch it with her. But other than that, she'll have to wait, I guess. But uh, I'm excited to see it with her. But it's kind of cool how Godzilla can actually talk. I, I think people don't recognize how much Godzilla can say about storytelling. But I did find it. I want to say this. Um, yeah, the, the um, Swang Monster one is pretty psychedelic. That one's pretty weird. <laughs> um, I want to say this. Every critic I know, well, I don't know, but I've read, so many were falling into the trap of and I fell into this too. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, um, uh, no, I'm not showing your monster tracks. I'm going to say, uh, what was I going to say? Fuck. I lost my train of thought there. Oh, okay. Sorry. I fell into this too. Where like you see, when I saw Gojira and I was the original Gojira and I was so uh, into it, you know, and I love that original cut. And so when I see sillier Godzilla, I felt weird about it and I wasn't as sure and it always does uh uh I don't know like it kind of um it, it kind of when you watch the silly ones you're like no but the real ones represent this thing about the bomb and stuff and the the so many people fall into that crap and then eventually you go oh wait no Godzilla changes based on the movie and some people have said it based on America's relationship with Japan which I sort of grasp but I think it is just like different stories. It's not necessarily. I, I don't know if that tracks as well. It's just like what the story is about. Because Godzilla can be a. Oh, Opt Optimus Room John, Medela Butterfly, all these people. Um, so it, it, it's interesting. It's interesting how that changes. And you can really see like how stories are adaptable and change and like what's appropriate for everyone and stuff like that. And I think that's like very much true. But it, I notice a lot of critics who either haven't seen Gojira. Or hadn't really had to reckon with that after minus one, comparing minus one to uh, the new one, uh, the Godzilla vs. Kong. Obviously, those are very different because one is, you know, Japanese and like dealing with uh, the post atomic bomb world. And obviously, like, there's a very critical of America thing going throughout it and stuff. And it's very like, even though it wasn't made in a post Oppenheimer world, it sort of much plays into that. And then you look at, um the american one it's like a silly cartoon so i i understand the juxtaposition is confusing but he, godzilla is both things but it's not one thing and it's like it's it's interesting to see critically some people deal with that and uh clearly have not had to deal with it before but if you look at my godzilla king of the monsters the american review i got criticized for that and i uh i gotta say uh they were right although i've rewatched that since and i still don't, i don't really like that movie but um, I don't think I was wrong necessarily, but, uh, 
but I was a little too serious. I do think that. And I think the more Godzilla movies you watch, you're like, okay, this is the one where it's like this, this is the one where it's like that. It's like, just like, let it depend, movie dependent. Um, uh, it, it, it really just depends on what kind of movie. And is he a villain? Is he good? Is he, you know, is he fighting this guy? Is it like, what kind is it? Not all of them are great. That's, I'm not saying that, but anyway. Um, what else? What else? Um, oh, I do. Oh, man. Actually, speaking of that, I do have another thing. And I... Sorry, I want to add it to my script here. <laughs> okay, hold on. Hold on. Okay. Sorry. It's been one of those. All right. So, um, other than that, uh, a lot of cool stuff has come out. The movie or if you vote, if you've not voted on that, I... Wait, where's... Where's, where are we? Okay, the movie review out, if uh, you haven't voted on it, is there, as well as I Hate People, People Hate Me, as well as uh, re the review of the Spider-Verse short and the Simpsons thing, which is really well this afternoon. I'm a little surprised, but I'm happy, because I, I, you know, I tried my best to make that a good one, and uh, it seems people really, really like it, so uh, I'm happy about that. Um, as well as throwbacks for the review of the original Godzilla vs. King Kong. Um, and then uh, after that, uh, tomorrow will be my review of uh, Captain America Winter Soldier, which is 10 years old this month, or this week. And I still think, uh, I know people are more down on the MCU and stuff like that, but uh, still a good movie. Still a good movie. So, um, you know, uh, why not? That's what I say. It's its 10th anniversary, and you can watch my review from 2014 tomorrow, or you can watch it now. I don't fucking care. Um, whatever. Uh, and I think that's everything. I don't know. But yeah, I feel good about everything, and I feel like I'm figuring shit out. But it was an interesting, interesting weekend, and showing her Godzilla and all that kind of stuff. Um, I'll, oh, now I remember what it is. Since Gary's here, I have sort of simplified i had to get rid of we had i had so many dvds and so many um ones that i had because i'm sort of converting my collection to digital uh because we just need space and i had so many dvds that are like i don't know there's some i keep like i kept the last jedi blu-ray because it has that crazy ryan johnson documentary about the making of it or i have certain movies that are rare but then I have ones that is like that double-sided bullshit Warner Brothers disc of Bonnie and Clyde. Um, I'm like, I should just get a digital copy of Bonnie and Clyde. Or I should, you know, those are pretty horrible. Like, I don't, I put them in the disc and the options are play movie, play trailer. And it's like, I don't know if I, uh, I don't know if I need some of these. <laughs> you know, I don't know if they, uh, you know, some of them I have are made. Like, I have an amazing set of Batman the Animated Series. I'll, I'm definitely going to keep that in amazing good quality but then there's others where it's like uh you know i don't know i have a blu-ray of halloween where deborah hill does the commentary like that's amazing but um we had to i we i definitely pared it down in fact i'm probably going to give some away uh from a patreon so look up for situation for it. there's two i'm going to get rid of um but uh i was able to kind of parse out what we wanted and stuff but i am sort of converting more to a digital thing because when I really went through all that collection, I was like, well, well, the Dark City DVD did make the cut because the Dark City DVD has the Roger Ebert commentary. Same with why I kept my Citizen Kane DVD because that also is the Roger Ebert commentary. Like, I kept a bunch for more than you probably suspect for special feature reasons, which is another reason to have special features because a lot of them I was like, well, I have a digital copy of this and the DVD or the Blu-ray transfer is like, meh. So, I don't know. I did The only real Disney one I kept was Beauty and the Beast because that was a work in progress cut. So, it's like, I don't know. I'm fine. If people want to keep their their physical media, media collections, that's cool. Uh, but to me, it's like we were running out of space and there's certain movies that I just need. I have in different places and I could get a digital copy from Means and stuff like that so but parsing it down made me feel better because it made me understand like what i need but i also like never get to watch them um in uh in 
uh, I never get to like watch them. So that's the other option. I really kind of need to, just, I don't know. It's, I never have the time for them. And so, but there are a lot I kept, but there's a lot also. I was like, I have this digitally at this point in a better quality copy. And it's like, I'd much rather have it on my drive connected to Plex where I can watch anytime I wanted. And if it's on a disc, I like never want to get up and do it. So anyway, um, but yeah, space is the real issue. If I had a ton of space, sure. But it's like, I don't have the cases. They're in binders and stuff. But I do have like a whole binder. Actually, it's right here. This binder, I'm going to be real with you, is all like burned rare stuff in it. And I don't know what I want to condense it down. But like, I have so many rare DVDs. Like I actually have, when I talked about in, well, in my X-Men Season 1 review, I, I talked about how I saw the original airing and the animation was bad and i could watch it because i have that and i have a ton of mystery science theater i need to transfer these digitally but i don't need you know <laughs> i have the actual whole run of the show from original fox airings but i don't need those because they're on disney plus and anyway it's just kind of understanding uh uh Syndrome said i thought digital copies were only available as long as the service had the rights to provide them even if you bought them um I can't legally comment on that, but let's just say uh, that's not a problem for me. Anyway, <laughs> my friend uh, Brett Torrento uh, is very helpful with that issue. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Anyway, cheers to you, sit around. Cheers to you. Um, but no, I have like a lot of rare stuff. And that's sort of what I prioritize. So if you have a digital, if you have a physical media collection, um, I would prioritize like, in my mind, like a disc of, oh, I have Vertigo on DVD. And you're like, oh, this is amazing. And then I look at it and go, well, there's nothing really special about this. Like I could just get, you know. I could just have a digital file of this as a better quality copy. So I think it's like stuff like that. Anyway, um, that's sort of what it, it's also like if I have it on Plex, like when people stay with us or we're hanging out, you just go through Plex and people select a movie. Nobody wants to go through my um, stuff like that. No, the, the thing with the X-Men thing is like after a certain point, like there's certain ones of season one that aired in worse animation than others. Um, but after a certain point, it's like a little silly. I don't know how much, I might keep more of those than you think, but we'll see. Um, uh, no, I do have like one or two movies from Amazon and stuff like that, but I don't have a ton. Anyway, I should actually talk, sorry, this has become like Jim's weird rant thing. Is Brett Tranter related to Quentin Tarantino? <laughs> I don't think he's, uh, I don't know if he's used that technology. I feel like someone who worked for him has. I'm sure he would like this binder because I have like Bad Ronald and all that stuff. Uh, anyway, cheers to using powers. But don't worry. I have a VCR in there. I have a multi-region player. I have a Blu-ray player. So I didn't sell out. And I have Plex. Until that VCR dies, and then I'll I'll probably have a, v, a v, VCR. Uh, Blu-ray and it's like same with like Spider-Verse I'm keeping. Like, I don't know. It's like, I like physical media. I just don't have the uh, space with the two kids and stuff. Anyway, sorry. This is like a whole thing. Uh, oh, I heard about this. Gary said, did you see there's an episode of X-Men? On Disney Plus, says there's a frame plate. Please frame, cut, please cut frame down. No, so like... Apparently, the animation studio they used for X-Men, they had all sorts of quality control issues with, I'm learning, which makes sense because I remember watching, because I taped the original air, like the first airing of Night of the Sentinels, and I always noticed the animation got better when it aired later, and and I had always been told that that was a preview, and I learned recently that, so they aired Night of the Sentinels in October, and it was that was supposed to be the beginning of the show, but... Because they, the animation studio didn't wasn't ready, they moved the premiere to like January, and they kept bouncing around dates supposedly. Anyway, this you'll see in my review. Never mind, I'm spoiling stuff. But 
they they that animation studio was problematic basically i'm sorry i'm like about to spoil a video that i'm about to work on so i get more into it um but it's interesting anyway sorry let's actually talk about the news this has just become i i i didn't mean to fill time actually it's stuff to talk about but uh, i definitely did all right um this and everything I do is supported by you, the amazing fans. I gotta say, either through this, um, where I will drink this very tasty Swedish fish thing. I gotta say, this is a nice ghost. Or, or through my Patreon, where you get all sorts of cool things. You get exclusive content. Sometimes you get reviews early. Um, like last week, you got two. Uh, you get exclusive content. You get more power in the movie review vote. You get uh, postcards, which I need to mail out soon. Um, and there's going to be a giveaway stuff as well. Um, all sorts of cool things. And as well as it helps me, it helps support the show, helps me pay bills and stuff. Uh, but it helps me be able to do film festivals, for example. It helps me um, get wider distribution for stuff. It helps me make flyers and stickers. I know a lot of people says help support the show. Um, like fucking literally, um, that money is used to support and promote the show a hundred percent. If you see pictures of stickers and flyers and stuff, you, you a hundred percent are supporting the show. And, um, I'm very much thankful for the people who are financially able to do so. It's really, really very nice of you. Um, if you can, uh, do that, of course, uh, um, if you cannot, there's always, um, liking the video subscribing if you haven't that's the way you can know about stuff that's happening um in case you don't what is going on with this sorry um <laughs> in case you don't or something like that it helps you get the throwback videos all sorts of cool stuff like that and also helps support the show as well anything you want to do is cool um but if you're just watching and hanging out and enjoying this uh, thank you very much for doing so uh, as well as you have the Discord with all sorts of stuff like the uh, license playing card channel, which has stuff like this, the Back to the Future cards, which are hanging in there. I don't know how long out. They're not very good cards. Um, as well as um, uh, the general chat where I at where we talk about. Uh, oh, I do have a thing to talk about Discord, uh, where we where I ask what stories I want to talk about on Movie Crap Live. We we there's a quest, daily question every day. And they have a weekly uh, a movie, uh, <laughs> sorry, a movie watch, movie movie night, basically, sorry, brain no worky good. Uh, and I showed up actually on Friday, um, and that was actually a lot of fun, by the way. I actually really liked it. I don't think I can because I never have, I really wanted to, and for Syndrome's birthday and stuff, we, that was really cool. And uh, I highly recommend it. If I had more time, I would do more of those, by the way. Um but I'm glad I got to stop by one. Um, uh, and uh, that was 100% amazing. So um, uh, I, I, I highly recommend it. It's a great community. If you like everyone in the chat and you're like, man, I wish I could hang out with these people that Jim talks about, you 100% can all the time. You can, even if you're like, I only have a half hour day at 1 a.m., you can still answer the daily question. It's all right there. You can talk about movie news, all sorts of cool stuff like that. So uh, if you uh, want to, it's there. I also have a TikTok, Instagram, both personal and for the reels and stuff. Tumblr, I'm still on that. Oh, 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 I have a Tumblr thing also. Uh, I've been using it. This goes, I'll, let me say the other things. I have a Facebook, Tumblr, YouTube, all that stuff. All those. On my Tumblr, this this is way back in Jim past or whatever. I've been reblogging my old Tumblr blog, Comic Scans, which I don't know if everybody remembers. Um, it was actually probably the thing that I was biggest for, for a couple of years before Pizza Party took off. And it was like under the comic section on Tumblr, when Tumblr was really big, it was one of the blogs. They really enjoyed it. Um, it was basically a blog for scans of comic book ads. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I've been reblogging some of the ones that I posted on there for like Ghostbusters and Godzilla and king kong and stuff like that so uh check out my tumblr you can check out comic scans it's a cool blog i don't know if anyone anyone here watching remembers that but i was a major part of that i, I was really driving i really enjoyed it but i had to give it up at some point but i i highly re, i i highly recommend comic scans but i've sort of been 
re reblogging old uh, posts. So um, it's a it's a cool blog. I'm proud of it. But I had every now and then I'm like I would I love like just going through comics and taking images and making it was it was a lot of fun. But um, it was around the time I had to give it up, and I still I have a uh, I have mixed feelings about giving it up. I I, I still think about it. But um, man, yeah, cool blog. All right, <laughs> I think that's all the old yeah. Sometimes it's cool to bring back the old stuff. Um, but yeah, if you've seen on Tumblr, like that was a plan. I think every now and then if there are movies that are comic stuff, I'll like search on comic scans and queue it up and have a week of like probably with Deadpool and stuff like that. It'll be, it'll be neat. It'll be neat every now and then when I can. Um, anyway, all right, let's actually get into the news. Uh, um, where is, okay, hold on. Okay. So we have two movie news things that broke tonight and then i'll get into the matrix thing but uh silver surfer was cast uh and uh there was some rumors that it would be a woman and uh it looks like that is true it'll be played a silver Surfer will be played by julia garner now this is not um normally fant uh silver surfer is norin rad uh who's the male version and shalabal is actually Norrin Rad's like girlfriend was the reason why he was like, you know, Galactus, don't eat my planet. My girl's on here. And he was like, all right, cool. But like your planet's like hidden and you stuck on earth for a while and shit. So she is the Shalabal version, um, who was, yeah, it's the same character, but different. I forget the whole deal with it. Um, I know a lot of people are going to get upset about, um, silver surfer gone woke or something. Uh, look, I actually did grow up with Silver Surfer Cog. This isn't like one of those like fake things and stuff. My dad, my dad's favorite characters were Doctor Strange, Silver Surfer, and Adam Warlock. So when they teamed up, shit got shut down. No, when, <laughs> when, he would just read them. But um, but Silver Surfer, I've read the original, was it twelve issue series a few times. I've read the nineties one a lot. I don't go as far past that, but I know a fair amount of about Silver Surfer. Um, I, I don't, I haven't got to talk to my dad about this actually, but, um, the, I'm curious how he feels about it. I'm a little, my mixed, the only mixed thing, I, I have a few mixed thoughts on it. I think she is really good. Um, Julia Gardner, she's a great actress. I know she was going to play Madonna, the Madonna biopic that fell apart, unfortunately, but, um, she is an interesting actress. I'm more like, inter I'm more like when I saw this go, oh, interesting, uh, you know, oh, that's a that's that's an interesting pick. Um, I'm kind of like not sure where this is going. I'm not upset, to be honest with you. The only thing I'm surprised by is that like I feel like this is the MCU Silver Surfer, and I felt like there was more of a uh, kind of preciousness to like like how they did Spider Man and like things like that. But another part of me is like I I, I I'm intrigued because she's an interesting actress. So I'm, I'm sort of like half like, I do know the Norrin Rad character a lot better. I don't know the Shalabal Silver Surfer as well, but I'm curious. Uh, as well as like, I feel like she would be, was it like Nova or whoever the second Herald of Galactus? I feel like she would be better as that character, but um, just knowing her as an actress. But I, I again, I don't know how they're going to write that. So um, I, I was sort of like intrigued. Um, but my other reservation, this has nothing to do with her. Um, is that I don't think the first Fantastic Four movie should be the Galactus story. I think that's a huge story. That it, it's it's the equivalent of like the Dark Phoenix, or it's like that big story that like if you're doing a Fantastic Four cartoon or something, it's it's like Doctor Doom and the Galactus. This this specific Galactus story, which is a great couple issues of the comic, like a hundred, like one of the one of the greatest. Uh, stories in Fantastic Four history. To me, it's like, do a Fantastic Four movie, introduce them, have it be Mole Man or some crap. Like, just deal with them and introduce them and then get into Doom and then do Galactus. But, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little worried about that element because I just feel like, I don't know. But I haven't seen it. I'm open to it. Uh, I think it's an interesting casting because I think she's an interesting actress. So I'm interested in that. I, my more trepidation is this is kind of a big uh, story. I don't know about that element of it. It's like, let's not rush 
into this like let's make the good fantastic four movie you know i mean i know like the other three times they've tried to do the origin story it hasn't worked out but it's fourth time's a charm eh, i don't know we'll see <laughs> we'll see we'll see what's gonna happen but i i i am intrigued i wasn't like uh i was more like oh okay like i'm i'm sort of like that i do think jack kirby probably would have been more into this and this is like of all the comics to say this is kirby's book this was really kirby's book so i think i think kirby would have gone in this kind of a direction but if you're going to go in this direction like it's got to be weird and i i think matt shackman can do it but uh we'll see what the big we'll we'll see what happens but i, I am like this is a bit of casting where i'm like intriguing like i i was i was not i'm more upset because i like i grew up with norn rad and stuff like that if i was upset not really but i i i was like kind of huh okay like what are we what's that gonna be like like, I just, I don't know. I'm intrigued. Um, I did know for a while um, they were considering male and female for Silver Surfer. So it was kind of like, this was an idea I would known about for a little bit. So it wasn't too shocking. But, um, I don't know. It's interesting. I, I, I have a little bit of reservation already with the Fantastic Four movie. Just because I feel like, like, let's not try to break off more than we can chew. Let's just work on a good one. Um, the other big superhero movie news right off the bat is Craig Gillespie was picked to direct the DC Supergirl movie. Um, I was also aware. Um, what does a Simpsons character have to do with Fantastic Four? <laughs> nice, Dan. Uh, uh, Craig Gillespie has been picked to direct the DC James Gunniverse, whatever, Supergirl movie. Um, that was, this is also a thing like I'd heard reporters saying that there's a possibility they wouldn't pick a female director um i kind of think uh he's good it seemed like i didn't see much backlash to be honest because he was the director of i Tanya and cruella uh also we went to the same school me and craig gillespie so that's neat not at the same time i don't think at all but um and i don't think he was a film major i think he was a graphic design major who got into film through the graphic design classes as i recall but i don't know his biography specifically um, but he, um, I think he could do a good job. I am surprised knowing modern comic book stuff. They wouldn't go with a female director. I think, um, I, I get the impression and this is this kind of weird problem. And maybe I'm reading into things is that a lot of studios are getting less into hiring someone who hasn't done a big movie before and pushing them. That's like becoming less attractive and it's more attractive to go, what if we get, like, somebody who knows what they're doing? Like, why don't we do that? Instead of somebody who's just supposed to, an indie person who's just supposed to make the acting good and we'll just, like, pre-visit. It feels like this, that, I've mentioned this before, but it feels like that era is over. And Craig Gillespie, who's, you know, done Cruella, done I, Tanya, did Lars and the Real Girl, did Fright Night, I believe. I think that's his filmography. I might, be, if I miss something, someone please tell me, actually. Uh... But it, it feels like that is the direction we're going in. Because when was the last, like, indie director, uh, smaller, you know, director or something, who got a big comic book movie? It feels like we're moving away from that. Um, it, I, I think a lot of that is just to do with, like, you want someone, you know, after the backlash, I think people just want to, they know they have to have sturdy shit with it, you know. And I think the problem is, is there's not enough female directors who are at that level. And you're not going to go to... I mean, look, Patty Jenkins obviously is not doing it. <laughs> um, uh, and then, um, you know, everyone says Catherine Bigelow. I don't know where she's been, but she gets offered everything. Um, but uh, I I don't I don't know who... I don't know. If the chat actually... I would be interested to know who you think would be able to... Who you think is able to do it under those pretenses... But the other issue with this, and if this is the case, I'm sort of reading into a bunch of things here, is that without this, we're not putting other female or smaller directors to eventually big be Craig Gillespie, basically. We're not letting people have that chance. And so I've noticed, like, as Hollywood is sort of shrinking, and that's a bigger story, is, like, we've read more about, um... Oh, we did Dumb Money. Okay, sorry. Uh... 
we've been re- reading more about like a, on the Enkler is hearing how production is shrinking actually and we're, we're seeing the shrink of things we're seeing like less representation and stuff like that are we kind of like moving a lot of steps back because of it i don't think it's craig gillespie's fault obviously he you know there are a lot of people and maybe nobody was available because again there aren't as many people and directors available i'd be curious how this search came down to him but um i think he'll do a good job honestly um but i was a little surprised the more i think about it i was like i think it would have been nice to go with a female director or somebody different or somebody surprising but um, maybe James Gunn is not into that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But I think Craig Gillespie could do a good job with this. All right. So we're going to be hitting the thumbnail hard on these next couple. Uh, oh, McCasner Bigelow has a movie in production. I've heard that a bunch of times. So I'm a little curious of that, how true that is. No offense, Will. Um, but that is interesting. It's nice to have you here. Will's been playing a lot of, uh, was it Wolf Walkers and all that stuff. You've been playing a lot of those. I see your school. That's cool. Uh, man, sorry. Oscar woke up really early. So my brain is like got a little gobbledygook, but, um, he was playing, uh, <laughs> secret of Kels and Wolf Walkers and songs. I, I like that you're playing those guys. Anyway. Um, so we learned today that there's been a Matrix, there's going to be a fifth Matrix movie written and directed by Drew Goddard. Uh, apparently the Wachowskis, or one of the Wachowskis, I forget which, is going to be, have a little bit of say. Uh, they, uh, no, the Wachowskis, both Lana and Lily. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Lana Wachowski who I believe directed the problem is like, I really wish they didn't have <laughs> similar names. It's like, that's really confusing. Um, Lana Wachowski who directed the last, um, matrix movie will be producing. It seems like Lily has sort of moved on with her life. Uh, um, but, um, it's, which is fine. Uh, I, I'm curious uh, about this. I know for a while Warner's has wanted to make a Matrix without the Wachowskis. There was sort of some like hush hush development about something with Michael B. Jordan, which never really got fully announced and everything like that. Um, and I, I'm not surprised because it seems like Warner's Warner's more so than any other studio operates under this thing of like what are our big franchises under the, the banner. And I feel like the matrix is probably something that they always see in their top, whatever most movies. And I feel like Buster is, is locked in a room. Hold on one second. I gotta, gotta free Buster. Okay, sorry. Um, I feel like Warner's works in this way. Or like, like they still advertise that they have Wizard of Oz, you know? And they still um, advertise Casablanca. And they advertise these legacy titles more so. Sorry, Buster, like, goes into a room before shooting. And I, I end up closing the door on him. So that's, he does this all the time. But he's fine now. I don't know what. And then I'll just meow and wake everybody up. Which isn't cool. Hi, Tune J Seventy. I don't know if I said hi to you, but maybe I did. Sorry. <laughs> um, and so, but I think Matrix is like this classic that we always revisit, we always reference, and things like that. But um, so I get why they're doing it. But the other thing, and I guess Will's giving me this transition. Thank you, Will. Said poor Goddard. Enough people still haven't seen Bad Times at the El Royale, which I haven't as well. Wish Goddard could make movies, making movies like that. Well, first off, cheers to you, Will. Thank you very much for the super chat. Um, I agree that Drew Goddard has had... Cheers to you. Kind of... I feel like he's been announced or 
in conversation for a lot of different franchises over the years. So part of me was like, when this was announced, I'm like, yeah, but it's like Drew Goddard. They're going to cancel this, right? <laughs> it's like, I, was, I was like, let's not get too upset because like, they're probably not going to, it's probably not going to happen. I was, I was a little surprised, uh, not to be a jerk. Um, but yeah, his, he made Cabin in the Woods and then Bad Times at the El Royale. And he wrote The Martian, and I think he pretty much, he gets a lot of credit for that because if you've ever looked at read parts of the book, the book is very dry and very different, and he sort of gave it the tone and the jokiness and how that movie's written is very much him. And he gets a lot of credit for it, as he should, because he's the one who, uh, you know, made it what it was. Um, but, oh yeah, he was going to do X-Force. Thank you, Will. Thank you. So he's he's... X-Force, which didn't happen. Like, he's there's been a couple big movies he's been up for. And I'd even heard he was a name for the fourth Andrew Garfield Spider-Man. So it's like he's always up for this stuff, but it never works out. So I'm a little like, I don't... We'll see. I know that he, supposedly, according to reporting, he came to Warner's with this take. I, I am like, I, I feel like that's just them being nice. And, like, they were like, hey, do you... Does any, you know, probably put the feelers out? And he said, yes, I have um a matrix five take or ask people or whatever maybe he went to them i don't know i'm i'm highly speculating in that regard but um i am a little hesitant because the matrix is such a wachowski thing and it feels to me like not a good idea but drew goddard is sort of weird i mean if we look at um what you know cabin in the woods for example or uh wilbur cloverfield i forgot he wrote cloverfield or um, even if you watch, I think it's Bullets and Broadway or whatever it is, did that thing on Suicides or uh, uh, the Sinister Six uh, script he had. Like, they're all cool ideas. I think he's a good screenwriter. So I think he could potentially do something cool. But uh, we'll have to wait and see. I am a little surprised that he um, would want to do it or anyone would want to. Because I don't, I don't know, I think he visually could pull off something but it's like the wachowskis are so unique in visual and f philosophically and stuff like that um i kind of i don't know if like there's a lot of directors that could do that i think drew goddard could do something interesting and uh i hope he does um it's going to be interesting to see i'm also like is keanu coming back but i had heard from various different reporters and stuff it brought up that there was sort of this whoa michael b jordan matrix thing in the ether for a long time but never got announced and uh stuff like that so so i i know warners has wanted to but they were always sort of more wanting to bring the wachowskis and i'm wondering if when the wachowskis sort of broke up and you know the last one happened and stuff i think i don't know we'll see i i like the last one theoretically i guess but i'd be curious to see what this is and if Keanu and Carrie Ann are coming back or what the deal is and how they're going to do it. Um, but I, you know what? I'd be interested in this. I'd be interested in hearing Drew Goddard's take, but he said that like, it's, you know, locked in the ne Nebuchadnezzar. And I was like, all right, dude, we get it. You've seen the matrix. Um, we'll see. I'm, I'm highly curious. So, um, smiling friends. April Fools. So on April Fools at midnight uh, on Adult Swim, we had heard there's going to be a new Smiling Friends. And everyone, including myself, was like, bull fucking shit. You're going to fuck with us. You're Adult Swim. And it started. It started at the beginning of the movie or the beginning of the Adult Swim midnight thing. And we got a Smiling Friends episode that we'd seen before. But it was in all puppets. It was all puppets. Three different episodes. And each one in a different style of puppets. Which I liked. It was the Mr. Frog episode. The shrimp dating one. And then the... I forget. But which one was it? Oh, the one where he goes to hell. Yeah. Um, they, they, or the Christmas one. They were good. I did like... Um, sorry. I did like that they were three different puppet styles and um i also like like they had the the attractive lady in that was played by a real person uh, they actually got jimmy fallon to be in it since they referenced him in the mr frog episode and stuff 
Um, but it it was very different and it was surprising. It reminded me there was an old Space Ghost episode. I think it was called Woody Allen's Fall 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 Special or something, and it was a Space Ghost episode played with like real people and puppets. Um, so it reminded me a bit of that. I, I guess Adult Swim going back to its roots. Although I don't know if anyone who worked on that is still even at Adult Swim. Um, but I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. And But I was a little like, we're not going to get a new one. And then at 12.45 or 12, you know, after the three episodes with puppets, they had, they had the new episode of Smiling Friends. Now, I guess I'll do a review. This will maybe do a later segment. If I do, Ryan Walterson has informed me I cannot have clips of Smiling Friends in it because I will get in trouble. You know, the, the copyright strike me. So if this becomes a video, I will have clips of different things that aren't Smiling Friends because I don't want to get in any trouble. So because I know I will, that means I'm going to pick different shows and we're going to pretend it's Smiling Friends, but it's it'll be the vibe. I don't know what I'm going to do, but when it comes out, if it comes out, post the two X-Men videos, it, it'll be wonderful. Anyway, so we got the first episode of season two with two different plot lines, which I have to say are, um, it's interesting because I've watched two different cartoons recently with, with kind of two different, tones in it and the only you know like there's the simpsons thing which i didn't really like how that was written uh there's the x-men episode which i'll get to later uh but this one was the best one because i've never i'm thinking about the both plots are legitimately really good um and i kept uh uh kept i kept thinking about one and then forgetting about the other I don't know if that's a left brain right thing thing. I don't know if it means I need more sleep. I don't know. But um, uh, so the first one was uh, the two of them had to deal with like a video game character who looked like from like early PS1 or something. And he has to find like they have to try to get him back on his feet and all this stuff. And like he does a cameo of one point to make money. And that's pretty fun. And then the other one... Uh, I think, hold on, was, uh, I was afraid, uh, was it, it's with Charlie, right? Charlie's the, I was forget characters' names. I should, um, I should remember character names better. The yellow guy. I think that's Charlie. Is Charlie the yellow guy okay now i remember pim and alan help the video game character whereas Char yeah okay charlie sorry <laughs> charlie goes and is helping like this really aggressive bully who shows up who um i'm doing this early because i didn't want to talk about it you know it felt weird to do it like later i don't know uh Ch charlie's having to deal with like this bully who um, comes in and is like, you, you can't make me smile and has to do like all these things. And that felt incredibly tense. That was like some, if you've ever seen the movie Funny Games, the Michael Haneke <laughs> film, uh, I, it reminded me of that. Which every time I see it, I was like, I would just tell them to get fucked and get out of my house. But um, I could never be in those movies because like you could, I would just keep repeating like, you just need to leave. I don't, I really don't care. I do not care. Like I am like not, the person like we will come to my door i'm like can i talk to you i'm like no you cannot buy i'm not I'm, i could never be that person but being in those situations because it it would annoy me and i have too much to do but being in, in that kind of feeling getting in that feeling feels strange and weird and uncomfortable and you want to leave and you don't like it and i loved how good they were with that but everything with gimbley gimbley uh who's this video game character was Really well done. I like the different animation style. I, hope, I liked how it played into how he was a character. From people kept mentioning Crash Bandicoot, all these things. I loved that part of it. Um, this was a really good episode. And it made me... Uh, so... 
Uh, oh, dude, you have no idea how much I hate solicitors. Like, there's a reason Jehovah's Witnesses don't come to my house. Uh, but um, it's not a joke. Um, the uh, Sorry. It, this was such a good episode that I'm like, I'm so hyped for season two. Like, this is a legitimately great episode of Smiling Friends. Like, I did not expect getting going this hard on season two. Um, I like that Adult Swim did a April Fool's Day episode. Um, a April Fool's Day thing all about Smiling Friends. I think it is the show that has the biggest potential for them. And I really hope more people check it out. Everyone who I've gotten into... Uh, everyone who I've gotten into this show has gotten really into it. And I think it's just like such a cool vibe and so weird and so awesome. I really, really love... Uh, this show and this just kept the love going i just think it's like a weird strange show of people who like really care about the specific storylines and characters they're doing like Gwimbley, like when he goes and visits the guy he used to play with and his wife and like everything <laughs> that was weird like the delivery of that like i i know everyone on the internet was talking about how like his wife was like i don't like the, who is this i'm scared it's like i'm sorry guys we I seriously really have to go right now like that was interesting it was just remind me of why i love this show like there's been certain ones x197 did it as well with the first one of that but this made me go like i am very hyped it comes back may 12th so we'll get more episodes of smiling friends and i cannot wait after how good this really was um i hope the clips whatever i pick i sort of have an idea are good anyway i'm not sure if that's going to be the april fools in that um no so basically anytime jehovah's witness used to come to my old apartment and I got, I got mad at them because they used to wake me up and I got really pissed off. And then um, I think they tried it again. I was like, look, you cannot do this to me. Like, I work, and they were like, yeah, but, and I was like, and I think I said something like, I will call the head person and they never bothered me again. And it's been a long time. Um, anyway, I really don't like getting called and stuff like that. I used to do this thing, people would call my phone, uh, where, uh, I would, oh, Mr. Millipede, uh, where it would be like, can I speak to Jim Gizmer? And I'd go, oh, hold on a minute. And I would just put the phone down and wait until they gave up. That was my favorite thing. And then sometimes I would, people would be like, what are you doing? And i go, oh, no, I'm fucking with this guy. And then they would, <laughs> then they would hang up because they were. <laughs> well, one person went on for like, like 20 minutes and just sat there. And I was like, if you're going to fuck with me, I know it's their job, but I'm just like, I noticed after I did that, they'd stop calling me. No one would call me for weeks. So, anyway, don't... I'm not... Uh, <laughs> whatever. All right, let's move on. Sorry, this is just making me sound like an asshole. Uh, but, eh, I mean, not that much, because they, like... Trying to take time away from... You know, it's like, they're basically... Most of the people are scamming you. I mean, it's like... Who's the real asshole, then? All right, let's move on. To box office. I don't know. Is Does people like this segment? I'm actually curious if everyone does. But we're going to talk about it. <laughs> anyway. Um, Godzilla and Kong came back stronger than uh, I think anyone expected. And that was honestly, I think, probably one of uh, the big victories we saw box office wise movie wise I think part of it had a lot of people were giving a lot of credit to the original Godzilla Kong which I do think that movie people were more hyped for it but um, this was the biggest opening weekend of the year so far with 80 million which is great uh, 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 which is wonderful I do think Godzilla minus one and having the months of Oscar buzz from that helped i do think the perception of godzilla which has changed has helped as well um i do, i think godzilla in terms of like there was just a monster of a show there's been all this stuff like feeding the godzilla fan base i i do think that made this a bigger movie i don't think it is just the first one i think it was all those things critically we're talking more about godzilla things i know like the critically acclaimed network has uh, thank god it's godzilla or Friday episodes, it's just a bigger name than it was when the original came out, as well as post-COVID, as well as, you know, I think it was like, and that IMAX, I read that apparently of this 80 million, about almost 50% uh, saw it in large format. And we're seeing that more and more, the large format, because I do think what's happening is with um, 
a lot of these films is it previously would be if unless you're like a weirdo like me who goes to movies all the time uh most people don't and if they're going to go they want to have a premium experience and especially a movie that's going to have big explosions and stuff like that they want to see it in the, the biggest screen possible and we saw that with dune had almost 50 percent large format and we saw that with godzilla and kong so i think we're going to continue to see that and i think it's going to prioritize hollywood doing imax more and stuff and you know hey tom cruise is right i guess uh so um but 80 million is great uh the second number two ghostbusters fell 65 percent, which i think is probably um again not good because that costs so much and it's at 73 million um but uh kung fu panda 4 doing great at number four with 151 million and dune part two is holding on fairly strong both dune part two and kung fu panda 4 only dropped 30 35 and 37 percent respectively uh dune part two is at 200 million 252 million um so they're they're both doing as as dune part two that dune part two is holding better than uh kung fu panda is insane like it's it's not so much that kung fu panda is bombing it's more that like the the word of mouth with dune part two is so good um it, but dan actually brings us up that they were projecting Godzilla and kong would make about 50 to 60 and it blew all of that out of the water so um I, I do think what we're we're seeing is a different kind of box office, which we'll see throughout the summer. Um, I am curious how things like, I think Furiosa will do well on IMAX, I think. Uh, Apes will do well on IMAX, things like that. But then you have things like, they're like the Fall Guy, like you don't, do we need to see that on IMAX? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I'm curious what will and what won't, but I think it'll work out where like certain films will get to play while other films will get to play and will like make the multiplex a little healthier. Um, other things, Arthur the King, that movie that you're like, seriously, that was a movie, um, with Mark Wahlberg and the dog, uh, isn't doing that well. I forgot it was out, to be totally honest. Um, where was it last week? Did we even, was it number five? Now it's at six. Wow. Doing real bad. Um, um, I also know, I keep forgetting, it's weird that the People's Joker got so much attention initially. And now it's coming out, and I feel like we're getting less attention. I still do plan on seeing it. I'm not sure when and how, but I, I would really like to see that movie. Um, and the bottom slot of the box office at number 71 with $120 is a film called Glitter and Doom. It is about serious musician Doom and free-spirited circus kid Glitter begin a summer romance, but their relationship is tested as they try to make it in the music business. Okay, apparently it's made $13,000. What? Wait. And it opened on March 6th? All right, sure, whatever. Um, Good for you. Amelie jumped up. Whoa, guys. Amelie is becoming a huge movie. Remember I was at the bottom of the box office? Well, the 2024 re-release has gone up 273%. Because it's now at four theaters and it made 844. Sorry, I'm being an asshole. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I brought it up to people. I was like, you know, that's in theaters again. I don't know if anyone's talking about that. Anyway, sometimes I like to just scroll through the box office. I also would like to see hundreds of beavers. What's remembering Gene Wilder? I don't even know what that is. All right. Anyone but you. Wow. Madam Web has actually fallen farther than anyone but you. That's interesting. That's interesting. Where is it? Immaculate. And number five, beating Arthur and the King. All right. Sorry, this is just me scrolling through stuff. Um, I would agree. Gil Keenan has not made a movie as good as Monster House. I still believe in him for, for whatever reason. All right. So next up, I think this was kind of surprising. Because uh, I feel like Kevin Smith, we hear so much about him and sequels and then it was like oh yeah he has a new movie and it's called the 430 movie and it's about three kids in the 80s who basically like in the summer of 1986 sorry i'll just read the thing set in the summer of 1986 the coming of age comedy follows three 16 year old friends 
played by three people I've never heard of, who spend their Saturdays sneaking into movies at the local multiplex. But one of the guys also invites the girl of his dreams to see the latest comedy. Each of the teens will learn something serious about life and love before the credits roll. Um, this is, uh, Kevin Smith has made another, acquired a, uh, it has been acquired by Spawn Films who got the worldwide rights. They did a similar thing to Jane and Bob reboot. So because I guess Kevin Smith likes working with Saban Films. Um, this was surprising. It sounds like a cool movie to me. I was a little surprised because I know he became a filmmaker because of the film Slacker. And it would actually have been cool if it was like a multiplex later in the 80s. And one of them stumbles upon Slacker and we could see them be inspired like he was or something. I was like, that sort of sucks that's 86 because I think Slacker comes out way later. But um, it sounds actually like a decent enough concept. I don't know if I like think he's as good of a director right now to do something like this like if it was 2000 if he had made this instead of julie i'd be like let's go let's do it but um it i don't know i i'm curious i would like to see a trailer but this really came out of nowhere um i thought mall rats 2 or something was going to be the next one but um instead it's uh it's this so i i am surprised it's a completely different thing but um I'm curious how he's going to do that, but um, I don't know. I would have liked a slacker thing. Maybe it's just me. I, I know I'm just putting in his own biography thing, but it's like that was a major thing for him. I don't know. Or they like happen on with strangers, strangers in paradise around then or something. It'd be interesting to see them. What what comedy it is like? What are the? I can't think of what in '86. If Sinram's here, I feel like Sinram can throw off some cool '86 movies, but. Uh, I am curious what comedy it would be. Would that be Coming to America? Or is that is Coming to America like 87, 88? I don't know. I'd be curious what movies they are seeing. I want to know what the film lineup is. Like what's on the marquee at this multiplex? You know what I'm saying? Oh, Jersey Girl. Ramsey, you're right. I'm sorry. Um, like what is the lineup? Anyway. Oh, man. I have... Well, time to... Time doesn't matter tonight, I guess, because I only have the reaction of it. Um, Strange of Paradise. <laughs> I don't know. This could be interesting. Um, so in other directors making original movies, I guess, Coppola's big blockbuster epic, sort of, I guess, Megalopolis, Megalocalypse, Mega... Uh, ooh, Star Trek Four. Man... Man, I saw Star Trek IV in, uh, in theaters, and my sister sat on my dad's lap, and she peed her pants. But she, she was sitting on my dad's lap, and look what my dad peed his pants. Oh, man, I've been laughing at that since 86. All right, oh, it's like, he didn't pee his pants, somebody else did. Uh, I bet he's like, I should watch Jim's stream, and then he clicked on that. All right, anyway, mega luck. Megalopolis is uh, this film couple has been saying he's going to make for forever and he finally made it and it screened for a lot of people and people act like it was an insane vision it was this crazy insane movie and I know Adam Driver's in it and Jack Black apparently came to set just to watch Coppola direct these are all real things it sounds like an insane crazy person movie I know he sold his winery to make it it cost over a hundred million dollars they're trying to find distribution, so they're starting to show it to people. And some people are, like, confused by it, overwhelmed by it. I am pretty hyped for this. I think it's pretty cool to see a big, insane Coppola vision at this point. Um, there has been... The only criticism I've actually seen is, like, why didn't Lucas help him pay for it if Lucas is top the Forbes list with, like, billions of dollars? Which I'm like, I don't disagree with that. If Lucas is, like, believes in personal vision or something. Or maybe it was all hype. And he isn't really making tone poems. But, um, which I've sort of suspected the whole time. But uh, the Mechalocalypse sounds amazing from what everything I read about it. I do notice people, um, uh, people were jumping off the Ator uh, deep end with that one uh, for this movie, which I'm like, I get that it's Coppola. I don't know. Coppola is a weird thing because I think the thing that hurts Coppola more than anything is that so many people hear, oh, I have to see The Godfather, and, like, people roll their eyes, or Apocalypse Now, 
But I'm going to tell you this, if you've never seen those, here's the thing about them. Yes, they are discussed too much. Yes, people are weird about them. But Godfather 1, Godfather 2, Apocalypse Now, and The Conversation are all great movies. Like, if you're like, hey, do you want to see a great movie? Those are all great movies. If you haven't seen them, and you're like, you're sick of, like, old white dudes talking about them all the time, and re- over-recommending them, there's a reason people still talk about those movies. I, I hate to bring it, say it to, to you, but just watch the first Godfather. Like, just see it. It it you If you're into movies... You should see those movies. Like, at least see one of them. I, you know, I do like those classics. There are certain ones I haven't seen. Uh, after his 70s period, it does get a little murky. But, um, uh, yeah, well, Godfather 3. You don't need to fucking see Godfather 3. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I, but I would say 100%. Like, just, just watch one of them. You, you will be like, all right, well, this Goblet guy is, like, really fucking good. Like, the, it's, it's really hard. I don't know. When that show, The Conversation, came out, I was trying to tell people. I was like, yeah, you know, it's kind of lame, but it's pretty amazing to think about all those people together, like, talking about the God, like, making this great movie. Like, it's, I don't know. I know it gets over-discussed, but at the same point, it's like, they're really good movies. So... I would just say, like, I know Barbie made fun of it and all this stuff, but, like, even Greta Gerwig, like, Greta Gerwig, you know, had seen Godfather. So, like, just, if you have any trepidation, 100%, just just see them. They are still really good. Um, but Megalopolis, Meg, Megalocalypse, whatever, sounds honestly really cool. I'm really excited for it. It, sound, it seems like it's going to be an amazing film. Uh, or at least like an interesting odd film. So I don't know. I would also like to see one from the heart in Cotton Club. I've never seen those. So I saw Dracula recently, and that was really good. Um, all right. So uh, Spider-Man Four, we keep hearing about, it, and the kind of rumor name I keep hearing for who's going to direct it, and supposedly it held up Euphoria season three, which I honestly don't think is going to happen because I do not see. Someone as big as Sydney Sweeney doing it. I do not see Jacob Elordi doing it. I just don't see it happening. I'm not the biggest fan of that guy, Sam Levinson, at all. But the one name I keep hearing is Justin Lin, who did the Fast and he, He's the reason Fast and Furious became what it was. Uh, he did um, the Sundance film that I almost forget the name of, where Ebert defended it and stuff like that. It, it, he's, he's a really cool director. I think he could actually make, what was that called? I feel like Sinram's going to know. Uh, sorry if I'm leading on you too much tonight. Uh, uh, he's a good director. I actually, of the names, I think he could make a really good Spider-Man 4. We'll see what happens with that. I know he left the Fast and Furious things at the end, but we'll see. Um, but that seems to be the odds on thing. There seems to be a lot of talk. I wouldn't be surprised if we hear a director and a date within the summer. I, I sort of don't think they can last. They can wait that much longer. But we'll see. Um, so this was one that I was surprised by and that's why I wanted to talk about it. And I, I think people might have missed it, but Ang Lee, who had made three films in 3D and very good 3D of the, I only saw the first one, Life of Pi, he did Life of Pi, Billy something or others, uh, who are you, Justin Lin, Just, okay, I'm going to look it up before I get into this because this is... Maybe a side tangent. Hold on. Justin Lin. Because it's going to bug me. I saw his early stuff. Um, man, when you look him up on Google, all the movies are Better Luck Tomorrow. He did Better Luck Tomorrow. It's Better Luck Tomorrow is, as I recall, cool. And supposedly, I think it's the character that um, uh, John Cho plays is the same character from Fast and Furious. So in a sense, Fast and Furious prequel. Um, anyway, Sorry. Okay, Ang Lee. Back to Ang Lee. So Ang Lee had three big movies in 3D. He had Life of Pi, which is a huge success and I think uh, really good. Uh, it's, it's Billy Lynn's long halftime walk, which I don't think anyone saw. And then he did Gemini Man, uh, which was also in high frame rate. And he put them out. He was very pro 3D and he's working on this Bruce Lee thing, biopic, and which will not be in 3D. And here is his quote on 3D. <laughs> 3D in general is so bad. The filmmakers are bad. 
The theaters are bad. The whole ecosystem is bad. It's not made for 3D. I refuse to complain to blame it on the medium. It's the audience and the industry who are not prepared. The theaters are stingy. It's really dim. You you can't really see it. It's flickering. People do a poor job. It gives you a headache. It's purely bad. You can't blame the audience for not liking it because it's bad. And they're asking to pay more money. <laughs> Sorry. And every time I look at that, I was like, I love that, like, before this, he was, like, so into, like, high frame rate and 3D. And he was like, no, fuck this. It sucks. I hate it. <laughs> like, this doesn't work. It was like, What? Anyway, I'm sorry. I do actually, I do find it funny. Um, but yes, Ang Lee has um, changed his mind on 3D. I do think Billy Lynn's Halftime Walk was sort of a weird artistic idea. Life of Pi was a way bigger hit. Than, I think he made like $800 million worldwide. Um, but um, I do think Gemini Man, Gemini Man, I have not seen. I'm going to say that I wanted to see it. And I found it kind of interesting in the idea that um, Will Smith, I feel like as he's gone on, has sort of been fighting with his past self. Like he can't live up to the reputation of his nineties boom and him fighting his younger self felt very intriguing to me. And I didn't, I still haven't watched it. I should, I haven't heard the best things, but um, I think most people and Will Smith thought this was going to be his like big artistic triumph. Like he'd work with Ang Lee and all this stuff. It didn't work out, and then, you know, the slap and all that stuff. But, it, like, it felt like that they really wanted it to be a thing, and it just didn't happen. And with the high frame rate, and they're technically doing those things. And I felt like that was, like, Will Smith's biggest movie star auteur, because he never works with auteurs, and, like, which is an issue I've always had with him. He always has to be, like, number one on the call sheet, no matter what. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting that that didn't, didn't work out but it's it's funny because he did have problems releasing that um so we'll see oh sitterim said i couldn't see life of pi in 3d because the bobbing shots on the water made me nauseous i only saw gemini man in 2d i i actually did see life of pi in 3d it was really really good um i saw it in a really great theater but um yeah it didn't apparently it was a bigger hit in india and other countries from my understanding but um But yeah, that's interesting. I could see that if it's going up and down, it would make you nauseous. But cheers to you, Syndrome. Thank you very much. Sorry, I will stop asking <laughs> you to be a trivia person tonight. Keeping me awake. Um. All right. So this is the thing I added. And it, you probably saw me tweet it. But Oppenheimer opened in Japan this weekend. Um, I think people know I'm not 100% the biggest Oppenheimer fan. I did not like that it did not show the actual bombs going off in Japan. Um, and uh, believe me, Japanese don't like that either. It's it's very. Uh, oh, thank you, Sarah. It's very uh, it's very interesting how we had a similar take on that. I find that uh, so fucking odd that they'd be like, "Wow, this uh, we're not super into this." Um, the reactions to this were, uh, weird. I will say the Japanese critics, of course, are not going to like this fucking movie. And by the way, they have every right to not like <laughs> Oppenheimer. There's like, you know, the whole history of the whole thing. And they're not being anybody, any Japanese people in the whole movie. I can imagine they wouldn't be super fans of this. I do think Universal looked at the release thing and went let's release this after the oscars so we don't have to deal with the criticism that would become a bigger thing during oscar time which was i was a little like disappointed in that but it's same with like how christopher nolan didn't mention minus one, godzilla minus one until after he won the oscar it's like they really just avoided that whole thing until much like the movie so i guess appropriate um but the japanese critics were very much critical of the idea that they didn't show it there are people who were the mayors of nagasaki and i believe it in hiroshima or maybe just here one of the mayors of one of the cities and i apologize spoke about it and it was a major political thing in japan um and the godzilla minus one director by the way has spoken out about oppenheimer a few times and he actually engaged with it very early um but um the one thing i am disappointed by 
is the American critics are like, you know, it's not going to handhold you and show you, you know, it was it, artistically, it was specific and like, that's what no one was trying to do. And I'm like, can't you just admit that like, it's America has a problem with like not going, getting into that. Like, can't you just like, I don't, I don't think it's a horrible movie or something, but like, just admit like, there are issues with that and so many people like i saw one critic going like well yeah but like they say like if america had lost the bomb would be considered a war crime and i'm like yeah 100 percent." and i saw critics going like well you know japan did a lot of war crimes too and i'm like yeah but they didn't like firebomb and son i mean like i don't i don't want to play this like who had the who had the worst war crimes game like it just got weird i don't understand like like, let them be upset. Like, they should be upset. Like, I don't... I, I found it a very odd situation. The whole thing. Uh, whether you like Oppenheimer or not, I, I don't... It, it's it's just like, you know, they were the ones who the bomb dropped on. Like, twice. Like, that's the only country that's ever happened. Obviously, they're going to have more issues with Oppenheimer. So, anyway. I, I found it interesting. I thought the timing was interesting. Uh, that Universal was able to get it that long is a fairly significant amount of time after. Um, but uh, I and I felt embarrassed for American critics who had they felt the need to defend it in such a way. I think to me it's like let uh, let them like let them be upset about it. I think they should be like you. I don't know if I was Chris Nolan, I would actually be like. Yeah, I mean, you should be upset about it, you know. And I I understand he presented it in a typical American way and things of that nature. But, uh, you know, I I, uh, I didn't like that they didn't show it either. I thought that was kind of not... I, I didn't think it was like what Zone of Interest did. I think it was a way they didn't want to deal with it. So, we'll see. It, I, I think they need to... Um, I don't know. I, I think you sometimes need to let people air out their frustrations and listen rather than complain and try to one up them. And like, especially with that, like of all things, like, I, don't know, I just found it an odd, an odd situation. And I was part of me is like, as I'm talking about, I'm like, I get why Universal was like, I'd rather not deal with this. So let's just like push it back. When do the Oscars happen? Could we just like not? I don't want to do that. Like, I. <laughs> I'm sure they're like, I kind of just like, kind of just want to get that Oscar for him. And just like, let's just not, it seems like a quagmire. Anyway, the theater focus said, dang, directing Gemini Man really changes a person. <laughs> I guess you're right. Nice one. Cheers to you. Um, I actually really need the energy tonight because I, Anyway, if you're watching this and the timestamps are not there, I'm probably not going to do them until tomorrow because I'm just going to, like, clean up and go to bed after the show. So I apologize. I just... I'm a little exhausted today, but I want to... Were any of the complaining critics ones you liked? Okay, actually, that's a good question. Um, uh, the War Crimes one was someone I formerly liked. Um... Uh, because I used to read Devon Faraci. I have mixed feelings about him uh, now. Although, uh, to I, I know some of you probably know who he is. Although I do think he handled his kind of Me Tooing better than probably anyone other than that. Since he owned up to it and has done Q&As and has actually worked on himself. Uh, but I do find sometimes I don't like his criticism uh, post that. Um, the other one was a guy who writes for Patrick H. Willems and he was very adamant about it. And, uh, I, I didn't, I sort of like him. I think he's a bit extreme and he, he was against it. Um, I don't, I don't know. I think for maybe I'm a little more like, sorry, I hope nobody's mad. I, I used, to, I'm not as into him now. Everyone else sort of stayed away from it. <laughs> Those two were the two I was usually using i think i saw like uh someone else like say something but those are the two that stuck out to me the most but thank you zane powers that was a good question i'm gonna take an extra drink if i cheers to you especially that was a good one sorry anyway that was a 
That was an interesting one. All right. So, um, um, oh, man. We are running. Okay, we don't have a ton of stuff. I'll just speed speed round through this, and then we will take a break. Obits, take a break, and then X-Men, and then questions. Um, I got to give it out. I don't want to see the movie Immaculate. Let me say that right now. I have no interest in it. But the press they are doing, and the amount that Sidney Sweeney has been doing for it, is honestly really cool. It's the kind of stuff I like about movie promotion. Uh, tonight, so you missed it, they were selling tickets for $6.66. Amazing. I, William Castle would be fucking proud. That's amazing. I also saw um, Sidney Sweeney did a screening of the film with a bunch of nuns. Uh, um, also amazing i like i've seen her do a lot of press i've heard she's more interested in doing cool press stuff with this film i i don't want to see this film but i've heard so many cool press things about it i sort of have considered seeing this film so i i actually like like my one of my biggest problems with people who like work in promotion or advertising is it's like we made a poster the poster looks cool and we did that and i'm always like I always read about these cool promotional things from William Castle or other movie things. I'm like, can we have more stuff like that? And like, this seems like a very serious, like religious horror thing. But like the fact that they're like doing stuff, like hats off to them. Like really, I also, Sydney Sweeney, like seems very cool doing stuff like this and promoting stuff like this and being open to this. Like, I want this kind of stuff more often. Like, I really do. I think they're, this is fun. Like, let's have more fun in promotion. Like, stuff like this. Because it's like, not only is it fun, it's like people want to talk about it and share it, you know? Like, I'm sure, like, Mark Wahlberg stalked by a dog shelter for Arthur the King or something. But, like, this is, like, like fun stuff. So, um, so Alex Garland, who, admittedly, I am not as big of a fan as everyone else. And never really, I enjoy Ex Machina's fine i think i like annihilation is maybe my favorite of his i didn't see men and then civil war is coming out and so first he said i'm retiring from directing and filmmaking and stuff which i was also like didn't you just sign a big deal for like the 28 days later trilogy so i don't i was I, right when i read that i was like i mean <laughs> I, I think they just handed you a bunch of money to write a bunch of stuff so i don't know about that and then he said, oh, my words were taken out of context. It's just when he's not directing and stuff. I, 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 I read all of it. And here's the thing is like, he should not have made those statements. That was fucking stupid. Um, also, it's like, if the movie's out and like bombs or does whatever, months later say, I don't think I'm going to do another thing. That's fine. But admittedly, like this is A24's big, big box office play. Like, the fuck is going on, man? Like, don't do... I don't know. I think sometimes with artists is, like... There's this thing. It's a real thing. It's not a crazy theory thing. Like, if you come up with an idea... And you get really jazzed about it... And you haven't done it, obviously... Um, you kind of get that dopamine hit. Your brain uses a dopamine hit like you did it. I may have talked about this before. And I've definitely had that. Um, but when you get that, like, don't... <laughs> don't tell anyone. <laughs> and And... Like, don't tell anyone who doesn't need to know and don't share it unless it's like actually happening or actually been worked on and stuff. And I think too many people, especially like retiring and leaving if you're a celebrity, like it's like, I think it sort of worked out for Jay-Z, but would it have been better if he just didn't make stuff for a few years? But then the Black Album wouldn't be as good, so I don't know. But um, like the retirement thing is such a theme of that album, but... I do kind of feel like with Alex Garland, it was like a mistake. It's also like the second time Kristen Dunst, Kirsten Dunst has been in a movie where the director has like completely fallen on his fucking face publicly. Um, I, I don't, I don't know what he's doing with this. I think he's, he really fucked up um, saying things like that. And clearly like the publicist for the movie is probably like, dude, like it, that's fine if you don't want to do anything after this, but like, we're promoting this right now. Like, just, I don't know. I thought it was very, uh, a little stupid. I just, I, it's like, if you want to do that, that's fine. But, like, you know, they're probably going to bring up your name for 28 Days Later movies had they done that. And, like, there's probably buzz about you. And you probably could do whatever you want after this. And, like, why don't you, like, 
think about what you're going to say or like take just, to, I, don't know, I think a lot of people should just like disappear for a little bit and not make a big announcement. Like Cameron Diaz didn't say anything. She just disappeared. And now, and then people want her back. Like, I think that works out better for you in the long run, to be perfectly honest. Anyway, I thought it was a very odd, um, weird public statement situation. Um, so we've gotten a Bambi horror movie trailer today. I gotta say, um, what was it called? Sorry. Um, I gotta say of all the Bambi the Reckoning. Of all the, this is a fairy tale, now it's a horror movie things, I think this is my favorite idea. Because Bambi has a reason to fucking kill people. Like, definitely Bambi does. So, like, I really actually, I was like, I was like, this is the best idea. I'm into this. I sort of regret now not reviewing the first Winnie the Pooh thing. Um, even though everyone told me it was bad. Because I'm, I'm into, I will see the Oswald ones. And maybe I'll see Bambi the Reckoning whenever it comes out. We'll see. But I, I'd be interested in it. Um, we got a first picture of moana 2 looked okay i guess same with like the mufasa prequel i'm like sure i'm assuming we're gonna get more of that maybe next week but we'll see uh baby's mom's death is overrated i don't know you know bambi's right here man come on that's not cool um <laughs> uh and also delroy lindo is going to be in the new ryan coogler 30s vampire film uh i i like this because delroy lindo doesn't get to be in a lot of huge stuff and i think that's a. Uh, I think that'll be pretty cool so i'm excited for that all right so we're gonna do some obits and we have some real big ones actually um first off joe flaherty who um was the father in freaks and geeks as well as on sctv as well as apparently sort of in freddie got fingered uh, died this past week. Um, one of the great comedic geniuses and underrated character actors of our time. Um, and very sad to see him go. If you've never seen some SCTV, look it up. True genius at work. And I thought, I, I really fell in love with him on Freaks and Geeks. And he did such a great performance um, in that show. Whereas where I really fell in love with him. Um, and then I saw SCTV and stuff. And um, But I wish he had been in more things. And uh um, I feel bad for his family, as well as uh, Lou Gossick Jr., who I don't know him. So, like, I mainly know him from Jaws 3, and I don't think you guys want me to say Jaws 3. I should say an officer and a gentleman. He's the first black uh, actor to win Best Supporting Actor, which is amazing. But I may, I, I'm i sorry. I, I mainly know him from Jaws 3 uh, or Jaws 3D. Uh, but um, I, I do, I always thought I liked him a lot. He is an if uh, or imaginary friend. I think that is, I actually, when I saw the poster, I kept seeing Lou Gossett Jr. Like he's one of the names. I thought that was really cool that he's like coming back. So um, it's said that I'm assuming that's his last thing. I don't know, but I'm glad that he's getting, I don't I have high hopes for that movie at all, but I, I do think he, um, well, uh, oh, I have a thing about that. I'll say it after the obits. And then, um, Finally, and someone brought this up. Uh, I never saw Emily. Em well, no, I saw Enemy Mine on a sci-fi channel so long ago. It, it, anyway, um, I don't really want to say that, but I lost Mario Kart. Oh, I'm sorry, man. You know, I like playing as Dry Bowser. Is like my guy right now. I gotta say. Anyway, we play Mario Kart a lot since we got the Switch. Um, this one, so MD... M.D. Bright, or M.D. Doc Bright, I keep saying. Um, he was a comic book artist who died. And at first, I felt like when I looked at images that people were posting. But the one that I got to give it up for is this Transformers comic. Um, uh, where it's... Uh, what's it? It's um, Shockwave on the cover. And on it, in the background, it says, Are All Dead? That image has struck me since i like when i first started getting into comics it was about seven or eight and i looked through back issues and i i don't think the inside of the comic is as good as that cover i i've definitely read the comic i could not tell you what's in it but i will remember that image for my entire life it is such an iconic some of the transformers covers of the marvel comics transformers are fucking amazing and that is one of them it's probably up there with this bill sinkevich um uh, first issues and stuff but 
really one of the most iconic comic covers of all time. That's probably what I will always remember him for. And RIP to him. Um, okay, so I did see, um, before we take a break, so If is directed by John Krasinski. And I note, I saw a couple of people t- tweeting it as directed by John K. And people who are like, what? And I, I saw it was taken down pretty quickly. But um, anyway, that was kind of funny. All right, I'm going to... Hold on, i got to set up my thing here. Um, people corrected that real quick. They're like, no, I don't, I don't think you mean that, John K. Uh, I'm going to go to the bathroom. We're going to do an X-Sign. Or really, the, the segment is going to be real quick because it's just X-Men 97. Um, uh, so then we'll, we could just do questions and we can hang out for a little bit. Uh, oh, those were joke tweets that got out of hand? Okay. They were funny, though. Um, <laughs> okay, I actually thought... Okay, they did get out of hand because I was like, what's going on? And I noticed they got deleted and I was like, I'm confused. Um, All right, I think this was a fun show. I hope everybody had fun. Can you hear that wind? Jesus. Uh, I'm going to use the bathroom. I very much need to pee. We're going to do X-Men 97. We're going to do questions. Then we're going to wrap this shit up. So I will be right back. Thank you all for being here tonight. And enjoy the uh, awesome image from Ace the Wind Rider. You should check out his links in the description, and I will be right back. Okay, I'm glad it makes you happy. It's a really good image, by the way. Like I, as I was 
Hey, how's it going? As I was doing the timestamps for um, last week, when I got to that part, I was like, I do really like this. Like, I watched it for a bit. I watched it till it, like, cycles through. So, thank you so much. I like that. What is all the things? I'm watching it. Titanic, Jurassic Park, Airplane, John Wick, Titanic, Jaws. What's that one? Clockwork Orange, Jaws. There's one I'm not sure what it is. Anyway, don't tell me. I'll figure it out. It's like people in a alien. Oh, it went away. Now I have to look at this fucking dick with a beard. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, okay, so basically, yes, I'm going to do the X-Men 97 thing. That'll be a short, real TikTok, whatever the fuck. And then we'll do questions. And then I will clean a kitchen while I watch YouTube videos. And then... Then I will sleep. Um, and hopefully no kids will wake me up. Let's... Fingers crossed. Uh, <laughs> figures this is not going to happen for me. Um, yes, there's a detail I want to mention. I'm just going to mention on stream probably for X-Men 97 that will be part of it. So let me... Sorry, I want to have... All right. Y'all ready for this? Sorry. Let me just take a swig of this. All right. Um. Yep. Also, check out Ace the Windrider stuff. That is really great. I'm forever thankful for that, Ace. Thank you so much. All right. So. Um, sorry, it's weird doing the TikTok thing live. I don't know. It seems like people like the segments. I'm always concerned if it's like just me getting, uh, just, I don't know, getting, getting too much. I don't know. I, I was, I am worried sometimes of like, are people into this part? But it seems like people are. Anyway. All right. So, um. I watched the fourth episode of X-Men 97, which is both a episode of Motendo and then is... Okay. I watched the fourth episode of... Okay. I watched the fourth episode of X-Men 97, which is half Motendo and then half Life, Death, Part 1. Um, Motendo is really fun watching Jubilee go into a video game, which is extremely obviously influenced by the X-Men arcade game. And I'd also say the X-Men Sega game, because I believe the second level is Savage Land, but maybe I'm misremembering the Sega game. Uh, and uh, it was fun watching her in Sunspot be in that game and like what it said about nostalgia, which is probably um, says a lot about uh, probably the show as well. Um, but it was it's always fun seeing a Mojo episode. And I, I, I like the kind of video game references, particularly X-Men video game references. And uh, seeing that, it was a fun, cool episode. I wish it had actually, the whole thing was animated like a 16-bit video game instead of what regular animation. But it was still a lot of fun. Life Death Part 1. Um, I was a little disappointed that Life Death isn't just its own thing. It's a classic comic drawn amazingly well by Barry Windsor Smith, written by Chris Claremont. But it sort of just sets up the thing. Apparently, Life Death Part 2 is going to have a separate episode later on. Um, but uh, it sets everything up, and then we get a, a glimpse of the villain uh, adversary, um, which isn't really a spoiler, but seeing the thing with her in Forge, and it sets up exactly what Forge did in the comic as well. Um, I think it sets up for an interesting episode of Life Death Part 2, which we will eventually get in two weeks. I like this episode, although I worry that the X-Men and X-Men 97 is kind of going through a lot of comics very quickly, and I'm sort of feeling like they're very much on the edge of going into something, uh, covering something maybe like too quickly. They haven't yet, but it does make me a little nervous. However, I did actually like this episode, but I think it is, as of yet, probably my least favorite of the four. Um, there's Oh, there's Deep Cut... Think, oh, they they referenced the Capcom fighting games. I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, the Life Death Part 2 next week, according to Wikipedia, Remember It is the fifth episode, and Life Death Part 2 is the sixth episode, which is weird. I would have done Life Death Part 2, but I haven't seen those two, so maybe we'll see. I don't, and then apparently Tolerance's Extinction is going to be the last three. So I'm curious what that's going to be. 
Um, I've I've heard heard many people mention the Jean Grey hair thing. It seems I didn't actually notice that. I'm kind of crazy how much that uh, people notice that. All right, I'm going to put sorry questions below. We might finish before twelve thirty. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, where is that? Yes. Okay, but let's get to the Patreon questions first. If you are a patron, you can do that. Uh, okay, Nathana Foga. What monster would you like to see appear in the next MonsterVerse film? So here's my thing with this. I would have liked... Because Godzilla King the Monsters, how many monsters were in there? Wasn't Mothra, King Ghidorah, Godzilla? Wasn't there like, there was a bunch. And it's like, I kind of went, um, uh, oh, it did? I didn't know that. Sorry, Nathaniel, I apologize. I didn't realize that was the older Jubilee. That's cool. I like that. Oh, of course Austin would know that, but that's cool. That's cool. Oh, I don't think that would have time in the short because I said too many things, um, but that is cool. But thank you for mentioning it. I will mention it here. She deserves that credit because she did voluntarily give up that voice role. Anyway, um, I would, okay, I would like, I would actually like Mothra to get a better shot. And I would like King Ghidorah to get a better shot. Um, I'd also like some MF Doom music in these fucking movies. Like, where's MF Doom? Better be in Fantastic Four. I want, you know, Ghidra or Ghidorah, the MF Doom album should be, if King Ghidorah comes back, should be in there too. Why is that not happening? MF Doom's a pretty big artist. Uh, I would say Mothra. I would say Smog Monster. Um, I would actually like, see the thing is, and again, I would like the actual Mecha Godzilla, not human Mecha Godzilla. It's like, whatever. Um, evil Mothra as well. You could do the '90s evil Mothra. Um, you could do. I feel like there's like somebody else. Or have they done Angerus? Have they done Angerus? Man, I should probably rewatch King of the Monsters because I forget how many. But Angerus would be cool. And oh, Gamera. Where's Gamera at? Let's say Gamera. I think that's enough people. Um. Sinram asks, any recent live action adventure or sci-fi movies that you think would work better if they'd been animated? Please ignore recent versions of Aladdin and the like. Um, uh, Valerian, probably. Um, what else? Um, Annihilation, probably too. Uh, actually, I bet you the Matrix Resurrection sci-fi movies. I would say those two. I'm going to keep it at that. Um, I wouldn't mind the movie Coherence. If you could do that as anime, I bet you could do some interesting things with it. So, um, Okay, Austin. I have not read this question. I love Austin's weird question. It's not weird, but it's fun to end it off on the Patreon question. Austin says, Hey, Jim, I hope you're well. And great show as always. I especially love the part when you told the story of J-Dog and Gwimbley failed team up album in 2002. My question is, who is your favorite main in the X-Men arcade game? And did you ever play any of the X-Men video games for SNES or Sega Genesis? I don't think I played the SNES one. I did play the second one. I had a Sega genesis in 2000 when no one wanted it and i got one for free and i got an x-men game i played the nintendo one and the wolverine one and i don't think i played any of the others but i played the sega one a bunch and the arcade game the main person i played because i was a kid who liked wolverine was wolverine i also liked dazzler more i played it a lot like anytime i could find that game if it's somewhere i'll play it but i mainly like i used to play so I beat that whole game with my dad. We played it one time in Ocean City, like from beginning to end, and spent a lot of money on quarters. Um, and like, but some of them, I was like, I was seven or eight, and like my, 
I remember like when Juggernaut would show up, I was like, no, Dad, I got to be Colossus now because he beats Juggernaut. And like, I would do stuff like that. So I, I definitely played every character. Uh, but I remember liking Wolverine, I think is probably the main person I played. But I, I would, I remember the memories of playing that. And anyway, it was fun. All right, let's go up to, um, okay, thoughts on the Disney shareholder news. Um, I didn't talk about this because it was sort of obvious what would happen, but basically there was this like conservative guy who was trying to take over the Disney board because it was so woke and stuff, and he was upset about that. Um, he lost, and it seemed like he would because, first off, George Lucas is had the most shares, and he wasn't going to vote for him. So I know he needed a lot of votes and it seemed from what I was reading, he wasn't going to get the votes and he was just like trying to make, get on the board and make a fuss and it didn't work out for him. And it was kind of obvious it wouldn't, but, uh, yeah, it was kind of like, I think Iger needs to put this behind him and move on to the next phase of Disney. It's interesting. Wish came out on the same day and it feels like kind of like, let's close the book on this post pandemic <laughs> Disney and Start working on the new era. It feels a bit like that is what's going to happen. We'll see. Cornbread, did you notice that both the segments for tonight's streams were about video games? Is this the universe foreshadowing your future as a gamer? Well, I do play games more because Sophie and I have been playing Mario Kart like pretty much every night. We do a Grand Prix. Um, I don't think, you know, it's funny. It's like, I enjoy video games, but it's like, and I know she wants the Peach game at some point, but I don't think, uh, I have no, like, when everyone's asleep, I think I played Mario a few times, but for the most part, like I don't. So I, I, anyway, sorry. I don't think I. I don't think I'd be a gamer just yet, because like I, when people talk, I like to make videos and to talk about movies and watch movies. I'm like I wouldn't want to. I don't think I'd want to spend two hours right now, you know, doing that. I'd much rather watch a movie. So, anyway, sorry. But it I don't think it, it is. But I am playing more games than usual. And I'll probably eventually hit up the Nintendo store and play some classic games. So, maybe. I haven't actually played Mario Wonder. And we have that. And everyone else has gotten farther than me. Because I'm like, one day. and then But then I'll sit down and go, well, I should work on this. Or write this. Or, anyway, sorry. Uh, Frog DVD, do you have any old Not Force DVDs kicking around? Also, what YouTube vids did you watch this week while cleaning the kitchen? Hope you had a nice week. Um, uh, first off, I do not. I gave most of those away before. I Pan has a bunch of that. Uh, what did I watch? Um, I watched the Patrick H. Williams Muppets thing. I also watched his Mario one. I watched um todd in the shadows the faith hill one i like train records a lot um here i'll go into my you know what you know what since we got we don't really have time now i'm looking at it. i do sometimes watch um philip defranco for a little bit which i know isn't as popular but um see so yeah, i watched uh no oh, it's not showing me some i did watch wavy web surf somewhat i watched um rocked 10 terrible rock cover songs i watched um uh, rock and roll true stories i did watch the rebel taxi actually about rock odyssey which sounds really interesting i watched men carrying things i watched bullets and broadway on ghostbusters 3 these are just ones i watched recently i watched joe blow what happened to red dragon um yeah i think that's it i watched oh my friend matt berry on indie nation network Talking about his film Forbidden Frames, and I watched Scapino TV. Oh, don't play stuff on fun facts about the Ropers. So I watch a lot of like trivia and movie stuff. And anyway, um, don't forget to mention that. It, oh, sorry, <laughs> I didn't know that. That's really cool. I might tweet that out. I'll use that for something. Awesome. Thank you for saying that. I didn't know that. That's legitimately cool. There's so much to talk. You know what? I gotta say, there's so much to talk about in each episode of the X Men. It's like, I feel like you, it is information overload almost every time. They're very good at it, but it's like, they're, I'm like, you're playing a dangerous game. You could really fall off this. Every People I know who even like it have been like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, Zane Powers, do you know how immensely disappointed I was that you said you 
wouldn't get all these annoying phone calls and Izzy didn't then call you. <laughs> that would have been funny. I like that. Uh, are you going to get more Swedish fish energy drink? Uh, I'll drink some now. I don't know. I See, the thing is, it's like I usually get on the weekends when I'm like shopping with the kids or something. And I think that's probably what's going to keep happening. But I might just end up with ghosts because they have a fridge like monster as a fridge and red bull as a fridge but they're like near the registers and ghost is like in the perfect spot while i'm like waiting for registers to get so i think that's why ghost has continued to be but there's a lot of flavors i would get this again it is tasty it is tasty it says natural caffeine so oh, it's only five calories oh wow this is healthy okay hmm. anyway good for you all right um A question, have you ever had shack soda? No, I haven't. I'd be I'd be intrigued to. Medela Butterfly, excited for the new Dark Universe movies or whatever they are being called. <laughs> I assume, oh, the wolf oh I didn't talk about that. And that was I'm excited for those two. I like the Invisible Man one. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about. Um uh, question, have you ever read the list of whitewash films on Wikipedia and do you feel any of them or a stretch. I have not. Uh, how about this? S Zane Powers. Post that on the general Patreon. On the general Discord. And ask me that question again next week. Or I'll answer it. Actually, how about this? Ask me on the Discord. Send me the link. And I'll come up with... Uh, uh, if I feel any of them are a stretch on there. And I'll answer it there. Sorry. Uh, Jim, you pronounce Wikipedia... Wikipedia, sorry. The way I pronounce the prestige um i actually do that because it's a reference to community but it's actually a reference to how izzy used to say wikipedia on um pizza party so it's sort of an izzy reference to be honest austin do you think we will get jet jaguar in an adam wingard godzilla movie um no but i was surprised maybe although i didn't notice like remember there's that talk of like why doug walker was almost in the first one and I was like, is he in the new one? I, I imagine, I don't know. We should get Doug Walker in a Godzilla movie. But to me, it's like, if I was going to be in a Godzilla movie, I wouldn't want to be in a Toho one. Like an America one, it's like, that's neat. And I, I do like Adam Wingard, but like that's not a real Godzilla movie. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, unless Toho, I know Toho signed off on it, but like, you know what I mean? It's like, Godzilla minus one's like a real Godzilla movie. The American one's is like, you, know, you can have your fun, guys. This is not... Anyway, uh, Zane Powers, whose death is more ever, ever, Jesus, I, I guess Bambi's mom, she, Zane Powers, that's a, uh, that's a funny one, all right, anyway, mom's still alive presently, Cornbread, today we found out that Tom Holland Spider-Man was in an early draft of Madam Web, we even had some concept art from them, I saw that, I found out that concept art also worked on monster trucks, that's not a question, but yes, I, I saw that. I know they've constantly been wanting Tom Holland to cross over with the Spider-Verse thing. Spider, whatever that universe is called, and it hasn't happened yet, so we'll see. Austin, favorite memories of those Gwimpley games? I remember the fighting game, and his he was pretty good, but like he was never anyone's favorite. I feel bad for him. Uh, can you blow up Zorak for me? Of course. <laughs> I love that. Thoughts? Also, her webs connects us all. Of course. Uh, what do you consider the weirdest Jerry Bruckheimer film, The Thanophobia? Uh, I watch Flashdance, and that is a little weird. It's like sort of almost a silent film, to be honest with you. 27 through 3. Now that the evil Nelson Peltz has been defeated, who do you think should succeed Iger? Um, I know there's one 20th Century Fox executive people are talking about. I don't know if there is a thing is, it's like that's a tall order because of all the d stuff you have to do while being uh, the head of Disney, that I don't know if there's an executive who could do it other than maybe Feige, um, do all the public shit, other than like a Feige or even a James Gunn. Um, I, I, and I'm not just picking, the, like, because you really have to be a public facing thing. Like if you're Zaslav or I mentioned him, Drink, uh, I mean, those guys, they don't have to, like, do the wonderful world of Disney. They don't have to do that stuff. So it's sort of like a, it's a harder job 
to fill because that's not sort of a thing an executive normally does. I, a lot of people have said, oh, well, Feige wants to be head of motion pictures and all this stuff. I sort of think if I was Feige, I would just keep doing Marvel shit. But um, I think an executive like that would be a good thing, but I don't think... Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but I, that's going to be a hard one. Uh, Lewis says, why'd you grow your beard out? Um, because I was never great at shaving on time. And so uh, my wife was like, you should just grow your beard out. Um, I'm not sure about it now because it is like kind of long. And I'm like, I'm not sure if I should like just do a smaller beard for a little bit. But that was kind of it. My wife was just grown out. And I think it looks pretty cool. It looks better than... And I actually like me without the beard now. I'm like more into this, so... Uh, Nathaniel Fogel, what's a live action show you would actively watch as a kid? I mean, Saved by the Bell, um, Pete and Pete, Salute Your Shorts, um, whatever that, there was some high school sitcom on Nickelodeon, King, uh, My Brother and Me, I would watch it every Sunday afternoon, was it all, did it premiere on Sunday afternoons? I don't know why, but I watched it every Sunday afternoon, I remember that specifically. Sam Powers, which celebrity handle, handled me to the worst funniest? Um, worst. Huh. I don't know. Well, Cosby. Um, but other than Cosby. Um, huh. I mean, Diddy, because he hasn't gotten arrested. Man, I mean, the sex trafficking. Like, Jesus. You know what I mean? That's the thing. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I have to think about that. Um, wait, where do we go? Oh, sorry, I just showed up. Hate that my work schedule has gotten in the way of... Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, and blood... Or, ah, okay, hold on, hold on. Medela Butterfly. Cheers to you for the dollar there. Thank you very much. Oh, I said the wrong person. I'm so sorry. I meant... I think you knew what I went. Welcome freshman. Yes, that is it. I'm sorry about that. That's stupid. Um, uh, wait, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about the Wolfman. Today was sort of a weird day. I think this is a sort of a, a loose show. Um... Where are we? Favorite character. Oh, favorite character to play in Mario Kart. Dry Bowser, presently. Um, where, wait, where are we? Okay. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Same powers. Thoughts on the white people who say the Good Times cartoon is racist. They can get fucked. Um, it looks like a cool show. Cornbread. Hey, so I assume this is probably because of the character limit, but why is the Matrix with the Wachowskis in the title with all we really know... Oh, did I say with? Oh, I meant without, and that was not a character limit thing. That was a mistake. <laughs> I'll fix that. It might just be new Matrix mode. That was not a... Oh, man, I wish... I wish that would be so cool if it was. Uh, you've told the story before, but it's still... Oh, okay. I'm, I'm glad that it's still cute. Um, as a New Yorker, does... The Diddy News affect you. No. I mean, I do... I have seen the place that Bad Boy offices were have been vacant for a while and had the Bad Boy marquee on it still. And that finally construction started right around this time. So, not too much. Uh, question. Who is X Factor? They're a cool team. Uh, my question is less about that. Haha. <laughs> Both segments had a commonality. Oops. Oh. Yeah, that's true. Sorry. Um, I think I'm towards the end of a long day, so I want to apologize for all that. Um, wait, what? I'll, what is Zane Parrish talking about? About this. Wait. Oh, well, I can see that mostly saw other black creators for it, so I could be mistaken. Oh, I... I don't know. I'm sure people did. Favorite episodes of Cheers, Sunbox 64. I only know the first season really well, and I would say some of those. One, It had to be the first thing, because I don't know past the first season. Although I've seen the first season a couple of times just because I'm a very silly person. Um, 
most arrogant belief someone could redo a classic movie and do it better. I mean, probably the fucking uh, psycho thing. I mean, Jesus. Uh, thoughts on Ultraman. He's cool. I don't know him very well. Favorite De Palma film, Blowout. And I think that's it. I think we're done. I'm sorry I said... I'm sorry I said the thing about... Um, I meant James Ralph. I'm sorry. Long day. All right. Um, I think that's it. Uh, right? Oh, the Plex thing. Uh, what's your Plex? Oh, I have my old laptop. I, I have my Plexer running off my old laptop. I have a drive specifically that's connected that's like in our setup that I just put movies on and it's separate from everything. And I usually just put a thumb drive in it and just go through the like web thing and upload it and stuff. That's sort of like what I do with it. So it's just like its own drive. Some people have called it a server, but it's not a fucking server. Um, it's just a, a separate drive and we put movies on it. And I actually, it's a cool server or drive because I went through all of the hard drives I have and found any movie I had over the years and then but put it all in uh yeah anyway all right everyone's saying good night but yeah I, I i so it's a culmination of like so many movies I've had digitally over the years into one uh drive so if you, if you ever do a plex I would highly recommend just going through all the shit you have digitally and finding all the movies you have and um especially like if it's a rare movie you find it in an archive and you could rip it and put it on there i would do it just for posterity because i have a few of those too anyway i think that's it thank you all very much for being here thank you for everyone who gave a super chat i so much appreciate uh everyone who does that it really helps and uh thank you so much i do not know one there won't be time stamps for a little bit i apologize for that two i there's i highly think that next week's show will be on a thursday and three thank you for being here i guess that's it Sorry, the show is a little, wow, it's 12.37. Yeah, this is a long show. Um, sorry if I was rambling too much. I think everyone wants to go to bed, and I should go to bed, and I will see you next time. Have a good night. Subscribe if you would like to, and thank you for being here, and I'll see you all next time. All right, peace. Bye.